welcome back. We're at Chaos Tournament number three. Top 16, match number three. We have Tivit versus Timnacrum versus Kinnon versus Kirik. Let's see, they are resolving mulligans. Um, Tivit. Tivit's uh, a new commander from New Capenna. When it ETBs and attacks, you get to, um, I think, investigate or make a treasure token based. It's a, a voting commander, so it also has you get to vote twice. So it'll go around the table. You'll make some artifacts. You'll uh, play a time sieve and take infinite turns. Looks like we have a start of the game already. We have Mana Crypt into Arcane Signet. Taxian Probe. Ooh, did we keep a no lander? That'd be interesting. Our target for Git Probe. Um, I would probably hit uh, Timnacrom or the Kyrick player. Kyrick can have some very explosive starts, so if you could warn the table about that, it might help. Land, Lotus Petal, another Swamp, Citadel, not bad, Buried Alive, and a Butcher, oh, nope, that was a uh, Balthor the Defiled. We play, pay three black and remove it from the game, and each player returns all black and red creature cards from his or her graveyard to play. Very interesting. All right, we have a Chrome Mox exiling March. All the artifacts. Demir Signet, or Talisman, sorry. Another artifact. Nope. All right. Hopefully the usually Kinnon doesn't play collector oof, so I, I think you're safe. But we may see a dock side from Timnacrom. Be pretty punishing. Got a UC. Pierce to the Chromox. Two for a Wish Claw. And they pass the turn. We see a land, a Lotus Petal. Don't remember if they had anything. I think they'll just pass the turn here. All right, Kenan. What you got? I've been playing a lot against uh, Kenan recently with the uh, Hires Big Flips. It can be uh, <laughs> pretty devastating. Back to Tivit. See how much mana they got. One, two, three, four, five mana. I think their commander. Commander is six mana. Oh, Jeweled Lotus off the top. Love to see it. You can tap uh, Chromox and your Talisman. And Three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. One floating. Let's do some voting. 
Remember, folks, you are only allowed to vote one time in normal elections. Looks like we are going to make uh, two treasures and three clues. One floating. Could uh, crack a clue here. Be mana efficient to draw a card. Wow. Man. This is like... If you had a Dockside in hand, this would be so great. It would be GG. Hit Dockside. Use your Wish Claw. Go get Adnaz. All right. On to Timnacrom. No red mana, so can't really use the Wish Claw to go get a Dockside. Rim. Let's see. Four mana. Coffee is doing its job. Let's go to Fonzie. We're gonna see a land. Land pass. It's pretty uh pretty slow start for Fonzie. Usually Usually Kirik is has a win by turn two. Soul Ring. That's a Nick those trying to nix. Did not have the uh, Simic mana to get Kinnon into play, which is a little a little sad. Ooh. Silence. They must have a uh, tutor in hand. Or they just have the, the time sieve. Alright. Tim Necrom. You're gonna let it stand. They pass around to Kinnon. Force of negation. Pitching an offer you can't refuse. Interesting that they would do that. In response, Nas. Playing it that way makes me think that Kinnon might also have another counter spell in their hand. Cluster. I guess it's not too bad. They could have paid for Fluster, so. Oz will be countered because you only have one treasure left. Silence will be exiled. Uh, so they didn't have the tutor, they just had straight up head gnaws. Love to see it. Go to combat. Someone's gonna get bonked. I'd probably hit Fonzie, maybe, or... I'd probably hit Fonzie, just because Kirik. Although, uh, Blue Farm has, uh... Do they have gnaws if they... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah. Let's see if uh, Kidden is holding back another counter spell with that Yavamaya. So we're gonna we're gonna investigate, crack a clue. Right, we found the land. We 
Did a All right, let's uh let's go find our Nas. Uh you have to tap mana to pay for Wish Claw. Uh you have to tap mana to pay for Wish Claw. <laughs> or not. No one's watching. Uh, we'll just uh we'll just activate it. Oh, and you gave it to Fonzie? That's not good. I would have given it to, uh, probably Kinnon. Hopefully someone will notice that you need to tap mana to pay for Wish Claw. Uh-oh. Judge. Need to judge. Well, if your opponents don't catch it, you can do whatever you want. Got a tainted pact. Can then have a counter spell. Pivot. It's gonna fetch. Sad if Tivit had a counter spell in their hand. Which is a blue source. Never a good sign. Offer you can't refuse. Pact is what they wish Claude for, or if they went and got Oracle. We gotta pass the turn. So, luckily, the uh, paying for Wish Claude didn't matter because uh, you could use the Ancient Tomb floating mana to pay for it. This is very dangerous, given Fonzie uh, a wish claw here. Everyone's out of uh, out of interaction. We get a jeweled lotus off the top. It'll be a Kirik with a wish claw, and you've got buried alive, and the the guy that brings everything back. Looking at the game time, we have 15 more minutes to go, so <laughs> we'll see if the win takes 15 minutes or we go another round. Have an activation. Oh, we're gonna go two or what? Uh, buried alive. Yep. And Kinnon was sitting on the other counter spell with their blue mana. It telegraphed it a little bit when they uh, let off with the force of negation. Yeah, Jeweled Lotus, Kirik, Buried Alive, Fluster. It'll be four total if they want to pay for it all.
could activate the wish claw, but I'm not sure what they could get here to protect this. So it's probably it's going to get countered. Crack pedal. And activate wish claw. What could they go get? Um, probably Blood Celebrant would be my guess. They could use Kirk to pay for it, play that, and then use the rest of their life to try and make some mana. We have to take a moment here and appreciate Fonzie's nails. They are quite nice. So my guess is going to be the Blood Celebrant. Or it could just be a setup for next turn. I'm trying to be mana efficient, I guess. I think if you're going to set up for next turn, you just hold on to it. If you can find a line to get there, I think uh, everyone's pretty much out of uh, interaction here. forgotten the citadel was in hand very nice Ooh, ah <laughs> ouch wow imp seal off the top uh-oh where the uh sirens start going off off the top what do they say better lucky than good all right is there one card we can just put up on top to run this game out The only limiting thing is you're at 15 hit points, so whatever combo you get to, you have to do it pretty efficiently. This is where you have to say, uh, why did you give Fonzie the Wish Claw? Why'd you do that? Alright, let's see what we find to get this chain going. Just 
like straight up peer into the abyss. <laughs> That'd be funny. But oh my god, it is. Called it. Anyone save anything? No, I don't think he did. Very, very fun. So Fonzie will lose half their life and draw half their library. Probably be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Twelve. Forty something. I'm not sure how many cards are left in their hand. All right, we're at four. Can we get there? We're gonna need some fast mana. mana or some ways to gain back some life. Definitely have to respect the uh, how fast Kirik can just win the game. Alright, we got mana crypt. Diamond. All right, we've got our mana. Romax. All right, we've got four to play with. And even do one more off of Yogmoth or Kirik, son of Yogmoth, if we need to. Soul Ring, floating one. All right, so we're at five. into our graveyard maybe three two black nope nope three one black uh, scourge familiar that will allow you to discard cards to make black mana. Yep, choose and discard a card, add a black. So we have our discard outlet to get uh, some creatures into our graveyards. You'll be able to make a whole bunch of black mana with all those cards in your hand. Oh, casting in tomb. Putting uh, Asmodeus, the Archfiend, into the graveyard. So we 
may see a necrotic ooze in the near future. Yeah, this is this is this is the game. Yep, necrotic ooze. Blood pet, even more. This card, make it black. Culling, four more black. All right, we've got all the mana. What you could do is uh, discard all your creatures, play Balthor, activate Balthor, return all those creatures from the graveyard into play if you need to. But you have the Necrotic Ooze, and for a three, uh, three black and pretty much draw your deck, discard, draw, discard to draw, yeah. So you, you draw seven, discard three to make three black, and then draw another seven using uh, Necrotic Ooze is using the activated ability of Asmodeus and then you're going to be discarding those cards to your familiar to make three black and then activating it again to draw seven. You have the ability to Draw your deck. Let's see what Fonzie's outlet will be. Discarding three, making three black. Activating Necrotic Ooze to draw seven. I'm gonna guess we're gonna see a maybe a gray merchant kill. Vile and tumor. Okay, that uh, I think it has an ETB ability to entomb something. Yeah, we're going to put in a chainer. I'm just going through the motions here for everyone. This game is over. Discarding Grey Merchant. Discard a couple more cards, make some more black, bring back Grey Merchant. So Necrotic Ooze can pay three life and three black to bring back, uh, bring back Grey Merchant. Oh, but we're just gonna animate dead to get some life back. Our devotion to black is a whole bunch. And if you have a way to return it to the graveyard, you could just keep bringing it back over and over again to drain out the board. Oh, yeah, we have... Uh, that one. Um, Demir House Guard is a sack outlet for creatures. So we're going to use the Necrotic Ooze ability to sacrifice the Grey Merchant and then the Chainer ability to bring it back. And that should be a scoop. Very well played. And we'll see you in the top four. Fonzie, congratulations. All right, on to the next match. We'll catch you later.